I just want to welcome you this morning on behalf of the pastor, Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan Sr. and Regina Dunnigan, our First Lady, and all the members of Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. We thank you for viewing us online, and if it's your first time, maybe your second, and maybe your third, whether you're just looking to be looking or you are looking for a place to worship, we would love to have you here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church, where we love, we care, we share. It's a family affair. Guess what? The Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue, okay? And so what you speak out of your mouth will either produce life or it'll produce death. And so I need you all to send a message to the rest of the fellowship of Cornerstone, all right? The Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church members, I want you to tell them something because we need to make sure that we understand this. Tell them to watch your mouth. Say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Because you don't want to speak anything over your life that you don't want to end up living. Come on here, somebody. And so the Bible says that he will bless those that bless us and contend with those that contend with us. And the Bible teaches us that if we speak those things as not as though they were, that even if two or three are gathered in his name, there he shall be in the midst of us. And so what we speak, it will manifest if it's in line with his word. And so I've come to tell you something else. We're going to tell you. We already told you to watch your mouth, but we got more good news for you, okay? We got good news for you. And the news is, say, this week will be a week for miracles. No, say it one more time for the person that just logged on. They, they was getting their coffee. They, did, they was getting their breakfast, their pancakes. Put your pancakes down and speak over yourself. Say, this week will be. A week for a week miracles. Now, if you believe that, open up your mouth. I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expecting something different. I cannot explain. But I choose to go against it And I'm speaking something different Come on, speak it Speaking something different We're claiming I'm claiming something different It's like this it's like Come on, something rock this Everybody say this week This week will be Will be A week for A week for Miracle Miracle This week This week Will be Will be A week for A week for Miracle Come on, say this week, this week will be, will be a week for a week for 
Lord, praise him now. Praise him now. Come on, get it in your spirit. Come on. Said, I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait till I see. Cause I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Praise him now. Cause I believe. I'm going to decree what God says about me. Your miracle is on. Your before you right now and just thanking you dear Lord we thank you for an opportunity to provide this service visually we thank you for all those who are online and viewing this service dear Lord we thank you dear Lord for providing us with people who support Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church and also care about the welfare of your people most importantly Father God we just thank you for being here 
we know that you will make your presence known this morning. We thank you for that. And we also thank you, dear Lord, that you're in everything and every detail in our lives. We thank you, Father God, that you've made it possible for us to be in your family, in your kingdom, through your son, Jesus Christ. No one, dear Lord, loves us as much as you do. We just thank you, dear Lord, and we praise you, we glorify you, and we lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, Jesus. All right. Come on, let's lift our hands and just begin to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, make it real, make it real, make it personal. God, we bless you, we thank you. We love you, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name, Lord. Come on, everybody, say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want, Just want to tell you that I love you. That I love you. More than Worship him right there. Come on, say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to yeah. the Lord, yeah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, say, I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. of your soul, I worship and adore you.
greet you this morning in the joy of Jesus Christ. So grateful for this wonderful day that the Lord has made, and we are able to rejoice in this day. I'm going to invite you to join me in a word of prayer as we prepare our hearts to receive what the Lord has placed for us to receive on this day. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light for our path. We ask that you would open up our hearts, that we would be receptive to what it is that you would teach us today, that you are speaking to us. We pray that we would not only be hearers of your word, that it would permeate us, that it would ultimately transform us into the disciples that bring glory to your name. Bless each person, I pray. Bless the family members of those who are listening, intercessorily praying for their loved ones. We pray that your word would extend through these lips of clay to the ears and the hearts of those who are tuned in today and be a blessing not only to them, but all that they desire to bless as well. We ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm great, uh, grateful to God once again. That's our focus this year, grace and gratitude. Grateful to God for the privilege of being able to stand before you and to bring you the word of God that comes from the book of Psalms. I'm coming from the book of Psalms, Psalm 119. The book of Psalms 119. I'm going to begin reading at verse 9, and I will be reading a couple of verses from out of this particular book. From the New Living Translation, How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I'm going to read it once again from the King James Version, the New King James Version. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hidden in my heart. I want to use for a topic today as I uh, seek to speak specifically to our youth in light of what's taking place in our city and not only in the city of Wilmington, but in many of the major cities throughout our country. And I want to also speak a word to all those who are listening today. So if you happen to have a young person that might benefit from hearing some encouraging words today, uh, reach out to them. If they're not able to reach them right now, make sure you send them this link uh, so that they will be able to hear the word that I believe the Lord has placed on my heart to speak to so many of our youth that are seeking to navigate the, the, the challenges Um, that they are faced with as they grow and become the people that God has called them to be. I want to use for our topic today, it's time to come clean. It's time to come clean. How shall a young man cleanse his way? Uh, By taking heed according to the word of God. So I want to use for a topic, it's time to come clean. As I was reflecting on what's taking place, the shootings, uh, many of the killings uh, that are taking place in our cities, and even over the last weekend, the number of people that were shot and the number of people that were actually killed, it troubles my heart, as I'm sure it troubles many of our hearts to see how so many of our young people's lives are being snuffed away in just a twinkling of an eye uh, prematurely often because they just don't know another way. The way that they are traveling seems to be the right way. And and often they want to make a turn, but it's difficult. So I want to share with you today that it's time to come clean. And many of you may be asking, well, when is it time to come clean? I was thinking as I was reading through the scriptures, there are several times when people come clean. Sometimes we come clean because of our conscience. Our conscience begin to weigh heavily on us and the activities, the behaviors that we are engaged in, uh, they just overtake us and we just can't exist bearing the burdens, the guilt 
of the activities that we know to be contrary or opposed to the word of God and the will of God. The person who came to mind when I thought about coming clean because of conscience is David. Many of you remember the story about David. David was a king. Scriptures say that he was a man after God's own heart. And yet, even though he was a man after God's own heart, he missed the mark. Like all of us, we sin and fall short of the glory of God. Well, David, he sinned by committing uh, adultery with a woman named Bathsheba. And in Psalm 51, it tells us that David was bothered by this both night and day. He wasn't able to sleep at night. He really couldn't eat. Um, he had become depressed. And that's what happens when you find yourself bogged down because you've been engaged in activity that you know is not the right activity. So in this case, it was David's conscience that made him come clean. And what he said, he asked God to wash me clean from my guilt. Do you know how bad guilt weighs down on you when you know that you have violated what is morally right, when you know you have done what is opposed to what you have been taught in terms of what is right and what is wrong. Sometimes it's morally wrong. Sometimes it's legally wrong. But it's time to come clean because your conscience is bothering you and guilt has a way of eating at the inside. You know, people can't always see guilt, but you feel it when you look in the mirror. You know that you have messed up and you're judging yourself because of the guilt. That's where David was and it forced him to come clean. Another time when you come clean happens to be because of circumstances. Uh, circumstances can force you to come clean even when you hadn't necessarily intended on coming clean. Uh, the, the passage of scripture and the story that comes to mind when I think about circumstances that have forced someone to come clean was Joseph when he had to deal with his brothers. Uh, there was a famine circumstances caused the famine to come about and they had to try to find food to survive. They end up going to Egypt. However, the person that they had sold into slavery had become elevated by God to become the prince of Egypt. And while he was there, they came looking for food. He recognized that these were his brothers. They had lied to their father all these years told their father that some wild animal had eaten up his beloved son, Joseph. And not only that, but had almost mauled his multicolored coat. And they took the coat back and they put blood on the coat to make it appear as if Joseph had been killed by a wild animal for all of these years, maybe 17 years, they had been Burning, being burdened down by this guilt of lying to their father. Unbeknownst to them, the circumstances that forced them down into Egypt would have them to have a chance encounter with the brother that they sold into slavery. That's a heart-wrenching story because when you look at what happened, Joseph causes their youngest brother to be kept back into bondage while they went back home to get their father. And when uh, Joseph finally meets his father. They all break down into tears. And he tells his brothers, I know you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. It was time for the brothers to come clean. It was time for Joseph to come clean because he had hidden and concealed his identity from his brothers. And so circumstances are often a way that will force us to have to come clean. And then there are times when crises will force us to come clean. Well, for whatever the reason is, I can tell you now that when I look at the number of tragedies, tragic deaths and shootings and murders that are taking place in our cities all across this country, it really is time to bring a halt to the bloodshed. It's time to bring a halt to all of the violence and it's time to come clean. Psalm 119 says, how shall a young man cleanse his way. How, how does this happen? Well, I can tell you that the, the, the circumstances that will lead one to moving into becoming 
clean are not the same as recognizing it is not the same as actually doing it. So how do you become clean? How do you get clean? How do you come clean? Well, we know that there are times when your conscience will force you to, not, to no longer be able to stay in the place where you are, but sometimes it's hard to reconcile the discrepancies between who you've professed to be. Your ego is portraying you to be and projecting you as one thing, but on the inside, you know that you are something totally different. You're pretending to be one thing on the outside, but on the inside, there's something totally different going on. How do you how do you correct that? How do you adjust and address that issue of being in a place and a predicament where you know your life is not what God wants it to be? Well, here's what the word of God says. It says that if you really want to address that, you've got to first be willing to look in the mirror and, and really confess to God that his word is true. Even though it seems right, it seems right to want to get vengeance. It seems right to try to take matters into your own hand, to try to rectify and justify that type of behavior. When we confess, what we are really saying is that God's word is true. So in order to come clean, we must first confess with our mouths that we have missed the mark. That's what David had to do. David, he said, Lord, I have sinned against you. Joseph's brothers say, we have messed up, Joseph. We have sinned. We have an egregious a sin against our brother, against God. You must confess that you have messed up. All of us have missed a mark. And some of, sometimes we miss the mark at different degrees, but we've all missed the mark. And we must confess. And then once we confess our sins with our mouth, I love it when John tells us. First John says that when you confess with your mouth, and if you confess, the Lord will be faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. So we must confess in order to be cleansed. And then once we confess, we've got to make a commitment. So you can't make pretend like you want to confess today and then go back to do the same thing that you were doing before. Here's what the word of God says. That you've got to commit your way unto the Lord. You've got to trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways, you must acknowledge him and he will direct your path. It's time to come clean. How does a young person, how does anyone cleanse their way? That's what the Psalter is asking. The question that he raises is how can a person stay pure? How can a person cleanse their way? And it says by taking heed according to the word of God. See, I will say to you that when you are walking in guilt and walking in shame, it forces you to hide from God. That's what Abel did uh, when uh, Cain did when he killed his brother, Abel. He had to hide from God. That's, that's what Adam did when he sinned against God. He was hiding from God. That's what David did when he sinned against God. He recognized that he had been out of step with God for a long time. How many of you have felt that you know you've been out of step with God for a long time? You must confess. You must say with your mouth and with your heart, the way that I'm traveling is not the way of the word and the will of God. That's what the psalmist is trying to get across, that the way that a young man, the way that all of us will be cleansed as we come clean is to recognize that the word of God is the source of our existence. And then when you do that, it enables you to be free to come out of hiding from God. You go from hiding from God to going to hiding the word of God in your heart. I, I love this because when you don't do it, here's the risk that you take. And you'll find this in Acts chapter 5. There was a, a man by the name of Ananias. And he sold his property, the, 
the, the church was trying to help people in the community, and Ananias and his wife, his wife's name was Sapphira, they had some property, and they went and sold the property, and they, they came back to, uh, to the apostles, and they said, hey, listen, we sold the properties for this amount of money, and so we're giving all of the money, the proceeds that we sold this property for, we're giving it back to the church but they were really lying. They, they were really not coming clean. They were deceiving. They were trying to pre- present themselves as more than what they really were. They were projecting that they were giving all of the proceeds to the church when in actuality they were keeping a portion of the proceeds for themselves. So the apostles asked him, they said, now is this all that you have received in terms of the proceeds from the sale of the property? And Ananias said, this is everything. And listen to what the apostle said. He says, why has Satan filled your heart? Why has Satan filled your heart? You have not lied to us, but you have lied to the Holy Spirit. And the scriptures say that he dropped dead right in that moment. Let me tell you that when we sin, all death is not always quickly physical. Sometimes we kill us a part of our integrity. We kill a part of, of, of our dignity. We kill a part of our identity. But in this case, it was his physical death. He actually dropped dead. That's what happened when we don't come clean before God. Something in us dies. And then uh, a few hours later, his wife comes in and they ask his wife the same question. Your husband told us that you sold the property and this is the amount that you have received as a result of selling the property, the proceeds that you've obtained. And they said, is this correct? And she said, oh, yes. And they asked her the same question. Why has Satan filled your hearts to lie against the Holy Spirit. See, this is what the pro, this is what the psalmist is saying. He says, in order to cleanse your way, to stay, to come clean, you've got to guard your heart. You've got to hide the word in your heart because once you hide the word in your heart, Satan cannot fill your heart and force you to operate according to the ways that he operates. He comes to kill, he comes to steal, and he comes to destroy. He's a liar and he's the father of liars. When you allow the Holy Spirit and the word of God to fill your heart, it makes a difference in your life. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. It's not the food that you put in your body that makes you live, but it's the word of God. How How can a person come clean before God? How can a person live rightly before God? How can a person build up the community? How can a person inspire others to live and live more abundantly? Is it by allowing the word of God to be hidden in our hearts? Paul said, whatever you do, it's not about trying to look good in front of others. It's it's not about trying to project that you are so righteous and so holy, that you are so good, that you are so tough, that you you got it all together. No, whatever you do in word or deed, let it be done unto the glory of God. This is what Jesus said. If you want the world to know you are my disciples, you can't show up at church on Sunday and then go out and have hatred in your heart on Monday and Tuesday. No, you've got to allow the word of God to be hidden in your heart. It has to be treasured in your heart. It means that the word of God becomes the praxis, the center of operation for all of the decisions that you make if you are in the midst of a situation on your job or in your home or in the community. What does the word of God instruct us to do before you make that decision? Hide the word in your heart. Order your steps according to the word of God. You've been offended. You must forgive. Why? Because when you forgive others, you are also opening yourself up to receive the forgiveness that God is extending to you. When we miss the mark, that's how we cleanse our 
way. It is walking in love. It is walking in joy. It is walking in peace. It is walking in forgiveness. It is guarding your heart with all that is within you to ensure that Satan cannot fill your heart. Let me tell you, when you listen to music, and that music is teaching you how to live your life, you better be careful because the music that is teaching you how to live your life may be teaching you how to live your life a contrary to the word of God. When you are listening and watching television, be careful what you're watching because the images that you are seeing may be teaching you how to live your life contrary to the word of God. Whatever you are touching, whatever you are seeing, the environment that you are in, whatever you are smelling, whatever you are smoking, you got to be careful that those things are not leading you away from the word of God. How shall a person be clean before God? How shall a person be pure before God? We need, God knows, we need to have more purity in our communities. Maybe it starts with us. I hear what Samuel said, and that's why after this sermon today, when you hear this message today, if you're listening to it live this Sunday, after this message today, at 11.30, from 11.30 to 12.30, we're going to be in the parking lot here at the church. And we're going to have a booth. You just drive through. What we want to do is pray for our youth. Any of them that want to come clean, that want to come and say, hey, listen, I want to be clean. I want to be protected. You want your children protected as they go out. You don't know where they're going. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who they're with where they're not in your presence, but you can still anoint their heads with oil. That's what the, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me beside the, the quiet streams. He leads me beside the still waters. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I want our youth to be anointed so that the covering of the Holy Spirit is over their lives. You have young children. You have youth. Bring them to the church. You know, I was thinking you can go to any corner and get drugs. If you, you can go to any corner and get alcohol, you can stop pretty much on many of the corners and buy a weapon. But where do you go on a Sunday morning when you want to cleanse your way? Well, today, on this Sunday, you'll be able to come to the church and have your head anointed with holy oil that the Holy Spirit will fill you, permeate you, and allow the word of God to dwell richly in your heart that that word might allow you to come clean before God. Not only you individually, but you'll be able to bless others that they too might have an influence and in walking according to the word of God. I'm really looking forward to having any youth. They don't have to be a member of this church. If you know somebody who needs to be anointed because you're concerned about their safety as they're walking the streets, you don't even have to be involved in anything illegal. It's just a dangerous place to be, which is what the shepherd does. He anoints the head of the sheep so that they might find pastures uh, safety as they go out into green pastures. First Samuel uh, 12, 23 says, As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you, and I will teach you the way that is good and right. When the Spirit placed it on my heart to pray for our youth as I was thinking about the tragedies that they're faced with, when I was thinking about how difficult it must be to know that they had a friend and that friend is no longer here, their life was taken away just like that because someone pulled the trigger and shot and killed that friend. That has to be devastating. And the fear, the trauma of living with that fear day in and day out, where do you go to cleanse your way? Well, you take the word of God as you've heard it today and you hide it in your heart. You open your heart up to receive the covering of the Holy Spirit, the anointing over your life, that the decisions that you are making are in a line with the word, not the word from the world, not the word from the street, 
not the word from Hollywood, not, not, not the word from uh, social media, but the word of God, because that's the word that's going to keep you. That's the word that's going to lead you. That's the word that's going to fortify and strengthen you. That's the word that's going to guide you. That's the word that's going to be a light for your pathway, a lamp unto your feet. My prayer is for you. If you're not able to make it, I'm still praying that the anointing of God would cover your life, that you will be protected as you walk these streets, as you go up and down the streets. We're not called to have a spirit of fear, but we're also called to walk in wisdom, to walk in light, and to walk in love. So if you'd like to have your child, your grandchild, your nephew, your niece, your neighbor anointed, bring them here to Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church located at 20 West Lebel Boulevard in our parking lot on this Sunday from 1130 to 1230. And we will be here praying that God will protect, anoint, and keep our children that they might come clean before the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today for your word. We realize and recognize that your word is indeed the source of our strength. We know that as Jesus prayed, he prayed that we might know the word, that we might know the depth of the word, that we might know the richness of the word, that we might be uh, impacted, influenced by the spiritual power of your word. I lift up every young person in the city of Wilmington. God, some of them have shields over their eyes and they are not able to see the devastation that they're doing, being used by a spiritual force, the spiritual wickedness that's floating around seeking to use whomever he can to kill, to steal, and destroy. We're, we're praying, God, that we would break the yoke of bondage that's keeping our young people bound, thinking that shooting and killing gives them street credibility. We pray that they would know that the credibility that they really need is the credibility that comes from you, the creator, the one to whom we must all give an account to for our journey through this life. Father, we pray for the homes, for those who have lost their loved ones tragically, God, we know the pain that they are carrying right now is beyond what can be humanly expressed. But we believe that you are able to even touch and heal where there is pain. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. Lord, we ask that you would heal those places, those persons who are mourning the loss of their loved ones, not only through tragedy, but just the loss of their loved ones. We thank you for how we've been able to celebrate the life of Brother Fred Lewis. We pray that you would bless his wife and his children, God. We pray that you would not only bless him, but also uh, the family of Sister Shirley Brown, her children and her sister and her family. God, we just pray that you would comfort them as we prepare to celebrate her life as well, God. We thank you for her service. We thank you for his service. We thank you for the service of all who you've placed on this planet to be a light and a blessing to others. May our lives reflect the power that you've placed in us, the purpose that you've placed in us, the passion that you've placed in us. Let you, may you allow that spirit to let us be all that you've called us to be so that when we stand before you, we'll hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's, that's our desire, and that's our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your support for the Lewis family. We ask you to continue to pray for Sister Lewis. Uh, we know that God has kept her all of these years, and he'll continue to do just what he said. He would never put more on us than we're able to bear. Uh, pray that she would be with Jeffrey. Pray for Jeffrey and to Sean as they prepare to funeralize their mother and grandmother respectively. And we ask that you support the family with your calls, your cards, your support. It means a lot when you've lost a loved one 
and know that you are not walking through the season of grief and despair alone, but you have a church family that's praying for you. So let's continue to pray one for another. And now I'm going to ask that you prepare your hearts for our tithes and offering. We want to, first of all, thank you for supporting this ministry. If the Lord has placed it upon your heart to share your financial resources with this ministry, it will be a blessing to us as we seek to intentionally apply the good news of Jesus Christ to every dimension of life. Yes, we have a building that we're trying to pay for. And yes, we have electricity that we have to pay for. But we also want to be a blessing to those who are in need. Sometimes people find themselves in difficult situations. So we have a crisis ministry. You can support our crises ministry. We encourage you to continue to support the ministry with your tithes and with your offering. And more importantly, we pray that you would support this ministry with your human resources because we believe God has given each one of us a special talent, a special gift that can be used in this church family. And we want to encourage you to use those gifts that the Lord has given to you because they're really not yours. He gave them to you that you might use them for the benefit of his kingdom and specifically the vineyard that you have been planted in. So we want to thank you for your support. And there are three ways that you can support this ministry financially. You can do that through PayPal. You can do that through the P.O. Box office number that's listed there on your screen. And also through the Givelify app. When you hit the Givelify app, you can scroll down and support and direct your, your contribution wherever you like to have it go. Generally, we uh, receive your tithes and your offering. If there's no notation, it goes in that direction. But if there's some specific area you would like to support financially, you may do that over and above your tithes and your offering. We pray God's richest blessings on you as you continue to be faithful stewards of all that the Lord has entrusted to you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that we have received today for those who have placed their gifts in the mailbox. And we ask that you would bless each person as they have given according to your word. As your word says, you love a cheerful giver. And we're so grateful that you instruct us just how to give. You said, bring the tithe into the storehouse and try you that there would be room. We won't have room enough to receive all that you desire to do through our faithful giving. So we thank you for those who give faithfully, who bring their tithe, their offering to the church faithfully. God, we pray your richest blessings as they are testing and trusting you that you will do just what your word says. You've never, ever uh, not come through on your word. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. We're grateful, God, for all that you entrust to us. Receive it now. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to now uh, remind those of you who like to come that uh, you can do that. Uh, right now, we'll be here waiting to pray for you. If there's a specific prayer uh, that you'd like to have, we're going to do that. Um, we're encouraging you to be socially distant, so we would do that one by one. And it may take some time, but we certainly want to encourage you to bring your youth uh, to be here for prayer immediately following the message that we will all come clean before God according to his word. Now we we'll ask the Lord to bless us as we depart from this worship experience, but never from his presence. And now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, to him be glory and majesty, to him be dominion and power, both now and forever. And all God's children together said, Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Pastor Dunnigan loves you.